morning. My name is Maureen Chong. Welcome to Devotional 2024 Series 4-6. And the Bible passage today is 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, and the title is Running Dry. The Bible says, The people of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained pure to this day, according to the word Elisha had spoken. How often do we feel we are spiritually running dry? For a period of about three years, when I was a 50-something I was leading various Bible study and discipleship groups five days a week, plus preaching or leading ministry team meetings once a week. In short, I had something going on six days a week, not to count visitation and pastoral care. After a while, I was spiritually parched dry. I was emotionally drained and physically tired. I was worried that I had nothing more to give. It was totally scary. Then I cut down on some of my regular commitments. I had to let God refill my tank. Now there is a Dr. James M. Houston, a retired professor in spiritual theology of Regent College, is still writing and speaking from his senior residence at the age of 101 years. He titles his series, Letters from a Hospital Bed. I'm amazed by how he never runs dry. Today, we meditate on the first miracle by the prophet Elisha, who ministered from 848 to 797 BC before Christ, who succeeded the highly respected prophet Elijah. He had big shoes to fill. Against the backdrop of the evil king Jehoram, who reigned from 848 to 841 BC of Judah, and the evil king Joram, 852 to 841 BC of Israel, Elisha ministered in an era of moral darkness. As he said, he needed a double portion of the spirit of the prophet Elijah. The city in question was Jericho on the west side of River Jordan. The life of Jericho and vicinity was dependent on a spring named An Assaulton. Since Jericho is located at 840 feet below sea level, the area is hot and dry in the summer. Since the area is on the east side of the Judean hills, the moist air from the Mediterranean Sea hardly reaches the Jordan Valley. Thus, the livelihood of the inhabitants has been relying on this spring year-round for thousands of years. Now, the citizens of Jericho were troubled by a certain spring having gone bad, and the land was unproductive for the lack of irrigation. The whole region was soon faced with drought and famine, Worrisome indeed. Besides, the inhabitants of Jericho might believe that they were cursed. About 558 years ago, 
when Joshua destroyed Jericho as the Israelites entered the promised land, he conveyed this curse from the Lord. Cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild the city Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundation. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gates. Joshua chapter 6 verse 26. According to this solemn oath, Jericho should not be rebuilt. But Jericho was indeed rebuilt during evil King Ahab's time. Ahab ruled from 874 to 853 BC. Hiel of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundations, his firstborn son died. When he set up its gates, his youngest son died. Recorded in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34. They acted in defiance of the Lord. The current inhabitants might very well believe that they were cursed. How to be absolved from this collective sinful defiance? Symbolically, the spring needed God's miraculous healing, just as the people needed God's supreme pardon. Elisha used a new bowl with salt to perform the cleansing. In Revelation chapter 16, there are seven bowls of God's wrath being poured on the earth at the end of time. However, Elisha's bowl was not the bowl of God's wrath, but the new bowl of healing. New signifies separation for God's use. It represents consecration. Jesus Christ urges his followers to be the salt of the earth in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Salt is used to bring out the flavor of the food and additionally salt is used for food preservation and curing bacterial infection. God's chosen people should have the properties of adding flavor to life and curing moral and spiritual infections of human society. Failing that, God's chosen people had broken their covenant with God. Who can mend the broken relationship with God? Who can heal our unproductive life? Who can conquer the curse of death? Not us, not Elisha. Only God can do that. He alone has the power to do so. Here enters the new covenant in Christ's blood. While I was still a sinner, rebellious against God, full of pride and self-righteousness, Christ came to save me from the condemnation to wasted life and eternal death. He poured out his blood from the cross as he died in my place. He cleansed me from my sins. Jesus is my mediator and my advocate. He removed the curse. By accepting his salvation, I now live a new life. I'm vibrant and productive from the eternal perspective. I drink daily from the spring of life. Only God can achieve this for me. His healing is everlasting. Having been healed, I shall never run dry. Praise the Lord. So let us pray. Dear Father God, I pray that all of us who listen to you will never run dry. Heal us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Replenish our spiritual and emotional vitality, Lord, and let us live for you forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me, and may God bless you all, and see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.